big thanks go out to Tywa for supporting today's video via Patreon. Bellow Bard of Brambles versus Finn, Chatterfang and Feather. Chatterfang and Feather, this will be a fun one. Mulligan the first one, thanks to uh, no ramp and no coloured mana. <laughs> we need to a one lander. Yeah, we need to try again, go down a card. Alright, two lander, again with no ramp, but we've got Lightning Greaves and Elvish Archivist, so we'll try and keep this one. Uh, let's get rid of Akroma's Memorial, because it's the most expensive card in hand. And we are first in the turn order, so... An Entis Restoration, probably go for that on turn 3, as soon as we're able to. Wayfarer's Bauble from Chatterfang on turn 1, and we see an Urborg straight away. Feather's thrown away a mountain off the top of the library with the Surveil land. Alright, still not getting into another land, Warstorm Surge this time. Got a few plays to make with our 2 mana. Let's go for the Elvish Archivist first of all, because that will trigger on an artifact entering. Although it's mainly the enchantments that we want to know about in this, because that is obviously card draw for us. A bounce land on turn 2 for the Golgari player. And we see the first commander, Finn the Fangbearer. <laughs> Alright, there is, ironically, a Cultivate. So we're getting into the ramp, but not the third land. And after next turn, it's not likely we're going to be able to do anything, unless we get into a land. A Lightning Greaves will trigger the Archivist for a couple of plus counters. Still no plays from Feather, surprisingly. Terrain Generator and a cracking of the Wayfarer's Bauble. Not worthy there's an access tunnel here as well, so... Going to be able to squeeze Finn damage through quite easily. And we see another Death Toucher, a 1-2. And a Kappa Tech Wrecker as well, so five cards left in hand. But plenty of Death Touchers available. And Finn going correctly in towards the Feather. I'd be focused on Feather and Chatterfang personally. And more so Feather than Chatterfang, at least we can see the combos coming with the Golgari deck, but Feather, very very difficult to deal with. So any death touch damage equals two poison counters. Land please. Okay, Feather into play, no doubt held up with some kind of protection. Terrain Generator, going to be activated for a land, so our opponents really starting to get ahead of us. <laughs> and a Rampant Growth as well, five cards in hand over here also. Carnivorous Canopy destroys the Feather, unless they can get some protection on there. And of course they can, it is a light the way, so... Return permanent to its owner's hand, not the best means of protection for Feather. But means they don't have to replay it from the command zone at least. And I imagine Finn is going to spread the damage now, because he doesn't want to pick on Feather. So yeah, spreads it around to all of us. Not worthy that the 1-2 is swinging in towards us, so we could block it with the Elvish Archivist. We'll just take the damage here though. So that triggers this. Whenever it deals combat damage to a player, you can remove the death touch counter and exile an artifact or enchantment. All right, turn five, finally getting into a land. So have to try and catch up now. Throw out the Visage you into Cultivate. Do have Field of the Dead in here to get some chump blockers in because the artifacts and enchantments are only animated during our turn with our commander in play. So finally, getting our mana going. Feather the Redeem back into play again. Scurry Oak, one of the combo pieces that our opponent has in his deck, followed by Chatterfang. So the Chatterfang player passing a couple of Golgari mana and does have access to two squirrel tokens, one of which is a new Bloomborough one. All right, the one three, yeah, spreading the damage around again. Not going in towards Chatterfang for some reason. Fanatical Strength, target creature, plus three, plus three, and trample until the end of the turn. And that's going at us. Um, yeah, I mean, it's just combat damage. This isn't going to deal any more infect damage to us, so... Okay. And then having the Death Toucher bite the Feather. So do they have a better means of protection now? Nope, just going for Light the Way again. You really want to be playing Protection Magic that keeps Feather in play. So we're at five infect damage already. Okay, Swiftfoot Boots as well, so do we have to get into our commander and potentially start blocking with this Elvish Archivist? And potentially before they get more squirrels down with this that could take our Bellow down. At the moment they'd have to sacrifice Chatterfang into it, so yeah, let's go for that. Just doing this simply to make better use of our mana and dodge the Chatterfang, like I said. 
Alright, so yeah, nothing else to do here. Might as well just get down the Swiftfoot boots and hope that we enjoy saving on the mana down the line because because we are just playing into a board wipe on artifacts at this point. But it does buff up the Elvish Archivist to make it a better blocker as well. A Talisman, Plaza of Heroes, and the Feather back into play again. So it's just a case of waiting for Feather to get into a decent means of protection, I think. But we bought quite a few turns against it, or at least Finn has, on a Dray Leader for the Squirrel deck. Uh, that's a new one. When it enters, plus counter on it for each other squirrel and or food you control. And you get a plus counter on it whenever another squirrel and or food enters. Then Nylea's intervention. Searching for three lands in this instance. Searching out Reliquary Tower. A Swarm Yard. And an Orem Reef Vastwood, not seeing a guy's cradle. Plays the Reliquary Tower, so plans on drawing a lot of cards soon. Maybe has Shamanic Revelation or something like that. Uh, Chatterfang into the right does have forest walks, so uh, surprisingly can't come in towards us yet because <laughs> we haven't managed to fix our lands properly. 1 2 to the left against Feather again, and Finn comes in towards us, so I think I will block with the Elvish Archivist. We're getting a bit too close for comfort now, forcing Feather to use some more mana though. Uh, Psychotic Fury. I'm going to give the command a double strike and draw a card, meaning it can better block the fin. Or, uh, it's actually the snake that's going into the left. So I'll block the commander, and Feather will block the snake. So then it's Gaia's Gift. I'm assuming that our opponent's... Yeah, our opponent's idea is to give Trample and a buff to Power, because you only have to deal lethal damage with Death Touch, which is one. So that means you deal one damage to the creature and then one damage to us in this instance. And that also gives Indestructible here, so Finn will not go down, but our creature will. Forcing them to use the cards in their hand though. So we're at 7 Poison. And a Nykthos, Shrine to Nyx, hardly have any permanents in play, so... Don't have much Devotion, could get a lot of Devotion to Red if we can play it out for much longer though. That land does allow us to go in for Warstorm Surge at least. So we'll play that here and start to try to slow down the board a little bit. So this is going to enter as a 4-4 creature because our commander's in play, meaning it sees itself enter, and we'll point that straight at the Finn, seeing as how he's so eager to take us out of the game. So we're not out of the woods with that commander yet, they can easily replay it next turn, but it is going to swallow up four of their mana at least. And we do have Haste and Indestructible on our stuff, so do we go after Feather here? Let's encourage him to block with this Death Toucher because that will slow our opponent down. At the moment he can get down his commander and still swing in with this thing. Oh, although, doesn't have the Death Touch counter on it anymore. I must have missed him removing that for something. Yeah, I'm not sure what he's exiled. There's nothing in the exile zones, so I don't know why that doesn't have the Death Touch counter on it anymore. Well, maybe one of you will be able to enlighten me on that. And as we can see during our turn, the enchantments and artifacts are deanimated, so this is why Field of the Dead is in the deck. So plenty of mana, plenty of cards for Feather. And the Psychotic Fury once again giving double strike and probably goes in at the Death Touch player. 4-5 double strike into the right. So that'll be the first 8 points of commander damage from Feather onto the Death Toucher. And then it's Light the Way this time for plus 1 plus 1 onto the Feather in order to untap it. That's probably why they've put this in the deck because it's modal. I still don't think it's worth it personally for the sake of yeah having to recast your commander maybe it is haven't run further in quite a while but now it's 10 commander damage star compass able to add an additional mana so thanks to the additional card draw ends the turn with seven cards in hand gets those spells back into hand as is typical in feather conjurer's closet to flicker stuff um flicker things into the scurry oak is about the only benefit I can see there with this board state. So flickering the Honored Dray Leader. Alright, this is a May ability, is it? Yeah, so deciding not to flicker the Squirrel there, but not sure why they're setting up with this. They've got four cards in hand, so we'll have to keep an eye on that. Well, Finn just passed straight through the turn and goes to the second main phase. So I think we have successfully slowed him down quite nicely. So throws out Finn the Fangbearer again. Alright, plenty of board wipes here now. A Blasphemous Act. 
Chandra's ignition is, yeah, there's no protection for bellow at the moment, unfortunately, so that would kill off the bellow. Unless we went for three damage onto everything. Which it wouldn't necessarily be the worst thing, actually. Can we wait a turn on that, though? Because I'd rather get something nasty like gratuitous violence into play. And also this gets us some decent devotion to red into play for the Nykthos, if we can keep these permanents in play, so... Yeah, let's take a damage to the Painland. So now this will enter as a 4-4 as well, and it can deal 8 damage to something. Um, do we go after Feather or Finn? Finn is going to keep coming in at us, I think. And again, this is where it's different on Magic Online. If I could ask this player in paper, then I'd say, you're going to attack us? Kind of have to say no here. So I'll just go after the Finn anyway, because if we could encourage them to attack the Feather, then that would be a lot better for us we could blow up the feather and that would hopefully slow him down he bounce it back to hand i assume so let's go one down the middle and one to the left against feather make it look like we're spreading the damage around a bit not much point in equipping up the swift foot boots unless we're worried about some combat damage or uh, combat shenanigans like a swords or something uh, squirrel token chumping as we expected but it's eight damage going through to feather here and we get to draw a card from the Gratuitous Violence, so let's see if we get a land. We do not, of course, getting into all the ramp and none of the lands here, unfortunately. But we've got Devotion to Red of 4 and 5 next turn, so we can tap 3 lands for 5 red mana, which might help us. Psychotic Fury at the end of the turn, and it's risky for them to use their last protection card, so yeah, they don't do it. Just taking the free card draw there. So yeah, if we've still got the Devotion of 5 next turn, we can go for Chandra's Ignition. And then maybe it'll have to be the Entis Restoration just to fix our colours a bit better and start getting some chump blockers into play. Psychotic Fury, again pointed at Feather. So it may well be the end of Finn here. Uh, they can get another plus counter on Feather. And this is the problem with Feather, the longer we leave it in play, the more difficult it's going to be to remove. So, so if Feather takes out Finn, then... Yeah, Feather is our next target, I think. Show of Confidence is... When you cast this spell, copy it for each other instant or sorcery. You've cast this turn, a plus counter and vigilance on the creature. So they get two plus counters. And yep, yeah, a 7-8 double strike vigilance goes into the right. This makes Feather a very good blocker if it gets vigilance every turn as well. So down goes the Finn as it kind of had to really because... It was threatening too many of us too quickly with Infect. There's a few two-card combos with Scurry Oak, unfortunately, so we're still not out of the woods with Chatterfang either. And Feather going to do something in the second May phase of Chatterfang's turn. A Psychotic Fury again for the card draw. And yeah, Chatterfang just passing straight through the turn, so not sure what the aim is here. But flickering, or at least pointing the flicker at the Scurry Oak. Wouldn't be a wise idea to do that. Okay, so does flicker it, knocks the plus counter off it. I don't know, maybe there's some kind of plan that he's got access to that I'm not thinking of. Okay, a three visits, still not seeing the lands. Gonna have to revisit this deck, I think, in another gameplay video and see if it runs a lot better when we actually draw into lands by turn nine. So do we go for the Chandra's Ignition here? Problem is Feather can buff if we point Chandra's Ignition at the... Warstorm Surge, that'll be 8 damage, but they can buff this to have it survive. Blasphemous Act, I dare say they couldn't survive, but we lose our commander then. Uh, we could just replay the Bellow this turn, couldn't we? So we get 5 life there, 1 mana for the Blasphemous Act, leaves us with 4, then 5 to replay Bellow, then we've got 2 mana held up for 3 visits, takes us into a single mana to put Swiftfoot Boots back on the commander. I suppose that's all we can do here, really, because we need to control Feather as best we can. Although, do they have the Indestructible thing? I think I've forgotten about Indestructible, haven't I? It's the problem with Feather, you can't keep track of it all. I suppose you can, if you care enough. Uh, Psychotic Fury for the card draw again. Oh no, I think it was Indestructible we saw from the Thin player, wasn't it? Uh, Regenerate a Squirrel goes on to the Honoured Dray Leader, that's fine. I'm guessing that the Fury is to try and get into some means of protection from red or indestructible. Okay, and a Defiant Strike. Again, going for the card draw. 
and instead having to resort to returning it to the hand, so yeah, like the way, saving them on command attacks at least. But that's exactly the outcome we wanted. So everything gets blown up. These have 13 damage markers on them, but they were indestructible at the time, so do not go down. Um, command zone, yes, with our commander. So we will replay the bellow. Actually, is it safer to go? Yeah, there's every chance that our opponent accidentally yields. So we'll go for the three visits first for a tiger. Triggers Field of the Dead. All right, our opponent responding. That is a uh, Rise of Draugr. Return a creature from graveyard to hand. They've gone after the combo piece in Scurry Oak. Wall Storm Surge triggers and yeah, we'll put that on here because they were quite eager to keep it previously. Plus it's just a potentially big creature, so we'll remove it while we've got the chance. Throw down the bellow again and hope that we dodge some Golgari spot removal. And this will be uh, uh, six damage from the Warstorm Surge onto the Feather player. We do get double damage from the Violence, of course. And still the damage markers remain on the enchantment creatures, but that doesn't matter as long as they have Indestructible. Something like a Shadow Spear would remove Indestructible from them. I think that's Hexproof and Indestructible, is it? Can't remember. But anyway, we'll see how much damage we can deal. Oh, I should have gone for the Lightning Greaves onto the Zombie Token, actually. Missed out on four damage there. We'll swing all of this into the left. I think we've got 22 exactly as it happens. Yeah, so managing to take down Feather is excellent. Draw some cards with the enchantments that landed. And Terrain Generator activating for the Golgari player. So time to see if he's got a two card combo to beat us with. I can't feel too bad about losing to a two card combo with the start that we had. Drew into another land finally. And it will come into play untapped at least. Yeah, Chandra's Ignition is going to be really good at some point, I imagine, but we really want to point it at a 4-4. And then we'd have Indestructible on our commander with a Mithril Coat or something. So I think, yeah, I still think it's worth having the Chandra's Ignition in here. Scurry Oak, let's see what they play into it. The Chatterfang triggers it for a plus counter. So that makes a couple of Squirrel Tokens. And then Orem Reef is going to put a plus counter on all of these, including the Scurry Oak, so they'll get another couple of Squirrel Tokens. So it's the direct damage plan with Gratuitous Violence and Warstorm Surge, I think. Sensei's top one card left in hand, but they can stack the top of their library with that. Okay, so Field of the Dead actually going to be more relevant than I thought it might be. Thrand Dynamo can sort of pay for itself. We only lose one mana with that. Go for the Cinder Glade, that's 4 damage straight to our opponent when the zombie token enters, assuming that they can't get rid of the Warstorm Surge, which they actually can. Um, might be worth putting the Lightning Greaves onto the Warstorm Surge actually, maybe should have done that straight away. Yeah, they can respond to anything we do here pretty much, but they'll have to sack quite a lot of their board and that opens us up to be able to swing in at least, so we'll try and put the Lightning Greaves on. Alright, and that lands, so that is pretty much game for us, I imagine. I'm going to tap down all the creatures, because I'm thinking we might be able to make landfall for some more um, zombie tokens this turn. Uh, this is for the Convoke, so uh, let's tap down a bunch of red mana. I'm doing this now to get the uh, Devotion to Red online, and that is for a City on Fire, which means we get triple damage instead of double damage, or actually we get both. So our opponent's at 35 at the moment. Warstorm Surge is the best card of the game so far for us. So at 35, let's see how much this deals. <laughs> they go down to 11 from that. So that was 24 damage. So yeah, it was doubled and then tripled. It went to 8 and then from 8 up to 24. Uh, so let's go for Devotion to Red. Oh, and our opponent's not letting us do it. Decides to scoop on us there. Not likely we were going to draw any cards there, but we were getting into Nature's Will and some interaction. Uh, we would have got Devotion of 3, 6, 7 and 8. So that probably would have been uh, the Thran Dynamo would have sent us down to 4, then back up to 7. Which means we can then go Entis Restoration and Farseek. But the Thran Dynamo coming in would have ended our opponent anyway, because it would have been another 24 points of damage. So yeah, that's what you can do with Bellow. Even when you miss lands for multiple turns in a row, I think it was turn 5 we only got 
our third land there, and then we had to catch up with Cultivate and the like. Had some powerful opponents, powerful commanders as well, so pretty good Bello apparently. If you want to see more from it, then be sure to let me know. Hopefully you are enjoying the new Bloomborough set. Big thank you to the patrons for their steadfast support of the channel. I'm Travel Kai. Thank you for watching.